I'd, I'd make you hear. I'm sure you probably should be about. If you're not. Well, I don't think they say the same as over there. Probably not. Sit! Yeah. Thank you. Ah, yeah. Right. Do we have a homework to do? No. Great. We start the next session then. <coughs> Who's your chemistry teacher? Lorraine. And do you sit beside Lorraine? No, because I don't like her much, but I like you. Oh, I see. <laughs> and we record this? This is recorded, by the way. Yeah. We have this on file. I only like, like physics teacher and math teacher. These are the only teachers you like. Only those two. All right. You have competition. You know Saudi Arabia, but they've no chance of qualifying. Why did they? Why are they even trying? 
I don't understand. I was, the funny yeah. thing is, I was just telling you that. Yeah. I thought they only let countries in with a chance, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or maybe Saudi bribed someone. Mine, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, and we're seeking partners. We're seeking partners. What's that? There's a thing in the You lied? Yeah. Hang on. No. What's the score? Are we still doing the speaking exam? No. And who are they playing? Yeah. Tyler! Tyler! This is a good thing, right? I don't know who's the worst no. of the two, Saudi or Thailand. Please. I didn't even know Please. Thailand had a football Please. team. Please. 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 Can you push it forward to keep it quiet? Thank you, Stephen Lee. <laughs> yeah. All right. Electromagnetic waves. You write that down? Yeah. So, um, last time we were looking at transverse and longitudinal waves. Um, so, we're looking at a very special type of wave, uh, a light wave. And light is a very special type of wave. It's quite different to other waves, so it deserves to be looked at by itself. Uh, it's an example of what's called an electromagnetic wave. Um, so what exactly is an electromagnetic wave? Well, here are some other examples so you can get an idea. A radio wave is also an electromagnetic wave. A Wi-Fi signal, that's an electromagnetic wave. Uh, from your mobile phone, the signal on your mobile phone, also electromagnetic wave. An X-ray at the hospital, electromagnetic wave. Uh, infrared wave from a TV remote when you change the channel, this is also an electromagnetic wave. Uh, so what is amazing about all these waves, which I don't know if you fully appreciate, all these waves are actually the same type of wave, the same thing. What about GPS? GPS also, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so they're all electromagnetic waves. And the only difference between a radio wave and an X-ray is frequency or wavelength yeah that's the only difference the frequency but they're all actually the same thing just at a different frequency so it's like saying they're all like ocean waves just at different wavelengths they're all the same type of wave just at different frequencies um i think it's good to write these names down because sometimes in the exam they would like to ask questions like give three examples of electromagnetic waves so at least three of these There are many, many more. Here are some from day to day life. <coughs> you know stuff, don't you? Oh, very good. Where'd you learn it? You taught him the word stuff? All right. Interesting coincidence. Okay. Uh, do you have those names? <coughs> you have them on Li-Fi? Li-Fi? Now I might have, that sounds familiar. I have, I have... What's Li-Fi? It's uh, Wi-Fi oh, that travels with light. light. Yes, I remember now, I watched it on a show a long time ago, Li-Fi. So it, it comes from like the ceiling, the lights flicker faster than you can notice. But then I don't think it's a good. Super fast, but can be... Well, super fast download only, but not really upload, because yeah. it's the s it's the signal coming down that can be fast. Um, so it's good, yeah. They said it's good in like situations where you have a lot of laptops maybe streaming something, something like this. It won't be good, like, like if you have a door separating. Can the light can still go through the door or under the door? No, it's really, well, it will work better in the room, yeah. Yeah, because it can be dragged easily and because it can be stopped. I guess it's good for security too, if you only want to keep it in a room. Okay, do you get these? This is called the electromagnetic spectrum. And we can see the position of the different examples on the spectrum. To the left is low wavelength uh, sorry, long wavelength, low frequency, and to the right is short wavelength, high frequency. So, for example, 
the uh, microwave has a higher frequency than the radio, and the, the uh, X-ray has a higher frequency <coughs> than the uh, infrared, for example. What is important here is that as you increase the frequency, well, no, that's not important. No, stop. <laughs> what is happening as we move from left to right? Let me put it to you this way. Um, imagine you were near these things. How would you describe your situation as you move from left to right? More dangerous. Thank you. More dangerous is what I'm looking for. Uh, you know, not exactly something you want to be in the same room <laughs> with. Yeah. Uh, I believe also this has the property of giving you Hulk powers. I think more about that later. Um, so, as you increase the frequency, yes, you get more energy. And that's what is making it damaging to your health. So, x-rays are actually not good for your health. They are damaging. However, you aren't exposed to them so many times. Maybe once per year uh, in the dentist, perhaps. Or maybe twice per year in the dentist. What if you are the dentist? Exactly. If you are the dentist, you have to take safety precautions. That's why I don't want to be a dentist. <laughs> uh, no, it, it doesn't sound like a good career, looking in people's mouth all day. <laughs> um, no, if you are a dentist, true, you have to take safety precautions. They have blood... Uh, they have... Yes, well, usually what they do nowadays, um, they put it's the x-rays on a timer, and then they step back behind the screen, and then it uh, takes a picture. Huh? That's very old technique. Well, it works. Yeah. It works. Um, in the beginning, before people knew x-rays were damaging to your health, the dentist would hold the photographic plate in your mouth, and the x-ray would fire, and the picture would be on the plate, and then after five years of doing this, their finger would fall off. That is a true story, and you can look that up. So they realized, maybe we shouldn't be putting our finger in the, their mouth with the x-ray. Uh, so x-rays are bad for your health. Also, what's bad is ultraviolet. What is the problem with ultraviolet? Yeah, ultraviolet gives you skin cancer from the sun. From the sun, yeah. Uh, and gamma is very damaging to your health from radiation. Yeah. Okay, I've noticed this, but like in the Arab world where we are more exposed to the sun, we have healthier skin. Yeah. No, it's the o it's the other way around. You have healthier skin, so you can be more exposed to the yeah. sun. Yeah. Not, not that way around. Yeah. That's it. Yes, exactly. Yes. And uh, in Ireland, we do not. We are white, uh, so it means we'll burn easily in the sun. And in Ireland, more, more likely to be damaged by ultraviolet. However, it's not all positive for you. What is the drawback of having more of this material in your skin? Mm -hmm. It protects you from the sun, however, there's always a price to pay. That's not a price to pay. So controversial. No, I think it's something else. Uh, do we know? No, no, no. Um, it's more difficult to absorb vitamin D. Um, <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah, yeah. 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 What? Yeah, that was... What? Was it a dirty job? No. What was it? Okay. Later. Um, so... I what do you think I was thinking? Do you know what I think? Right? No, 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 we don't want to know what he was thinking. Um, I wasn't. It's easier for me to get vitamin D from the sun um, because my skin is paler. However, that means it's more likely for my skin to be damaged by the sun. So, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a balanced thing. Um, it's a sword with two edges. Yes, yes, a coin with two sides. Uh. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> And so on. So and like this is the better. No. Yes. Because it's hot. Oh, okay. It's not exactly. Okay. Yes. Question. Okay. Maybe. Yes. Are gamma rays used in cancer treatment? They are, and we'll actually look at in um, semester two of application of things like gamma rays. 
uh, for treatment of cancer. Now, obviously, ga gamma causes cancer, but used in a certain way, it can actually um, treat it. What's happening is gamma kills cells. It kills healthy cells and makes cancerous cells. If you use it the right way, you can target it to kill the cancerous cells and not the healthy cells. Anyway, something really important here. At what point in this diagram does it become damaging to your health, would you say? At, at ultraviolet to the right. So anything with this frequency of UV or higher, damaging to your health. Where do you think your Wi-Fi is on this diagram? Uh, You're going between ultraviolet and visible or x-ray? Visible. Anyone else? Between, oh, yeah. between, between microwave and infrared. Yeah. You're going between microwave and infrared? Yeah. Between X-ray and ultraviolet. Between yeah. X-ray yeah. and ultraviolet. So, I'm glad to see we have two possibilities here. We're either thinking it's high or low frequency. So the people who are thinking high frequency, I'm willing to bet you think it's high frequency because you believe what you heard that it's damaging to your house. That is completely wrong. Uh, ultraviolet, um, Wi-Fi is here. Which means Wi-Fi does not in any way damage your health. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Anybody who mobile says otherwise is just ignorant. Mobile phone. mobile phone? Yes, really. People who say Wi-Fi is damaging your health are just ignorant. Now, it's not their fault, but they have the wrong information. Uh, they don't understand that it's not damaging. There's no evidence to say it's damaging. <laughs> and... So if I keep the laptop on my lap for a long time, my children must be home? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, are, you will not be compromising future generation <laughs> production by doing this. <laughs> yes. Um, Wi-Fi does not damage your health. So anybody who says it does and they offer you products like special screens, it's completely fake science. What about microwaves? Like microwaves? Again, the same logic. It's not damaging to your health. Despite what people say, they're just ignorant. Yeah, unless you put the lamp as a microwave. Then, yes, and that's and the different matter, though. Unless it explodes. Like no, no, you only give me the one Yes, exactly. If you are exposed to Wi-Fi, the, uh, to microwave, the only thing that happens is the same thing that happens when you're exposed to a fire. Your skin will just get warm. But it's not damaging your skin. In the same way, being warmed by a fire doesn't damage your skin. No, but, they go like some sun, some but that is wrong. That is uh, not true. What about mobile, mobile phones. Does anyone know where mobile phone occupies the spectrum? With what? Yeah. Uh, it is, I believe, slightly smaller frequency than a microwave, so it's around about here. Again, why mobile phones do not damage your health? There is plenty. Again, this is completely fake. Where it's fake. Science. Fake science. It doesn't damage your health. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's f the science is very, very clear here. The reason this is damaging to your health is what happens is uh, you've done ionization in chemistry. Yeah. You're doing it now. So what happens is um, you have to have enough energy to ionize the electrons in your skin and that energy, that ionization energy happens when the frequency matches ultraviolet or greater. If the frequency is less than that it means there just isn't enough energy to ionize the electron. The reason it damages you is because when the electron is freed by ionization it could move and smash into your DNA and damage the cell and then cause a cancerous cell. So it's very clear, it has to be at least ultraviolet to cause any health damage. Before that it doesn't. Think about this, would you say visible light damages your skin and gives you skin cancer? No, of course not, otherwise we'd be quite screwed. <laughs> so by the same logic, everything here to the left is not damaging to your health. And I would encourage you to challenge people in the future who say that it is, but they're wrong, completely wrong. Uh, in the exam they sometimes ask you to draw this. So you will need to know where they are on the diagram. So can you please copy this in your book? And if you like, you can add in Wi-Fi here, mobile phone here. Um, but for the exam, they don't need to have that. But it's good for you to know where it is. Mobile phone where? 
I think mobile phone is a tiny bit less than microwave for frequency. Wi-Fi wi is exactly the same as microwave. Okay, question. Wait. If you... Now, don't be very careful if you do do this, and I'm not really recommending you do it. If you put your phone in the microwave, don't turn it on, though. Keep it off. If you put the phone in the microwave and close the door and look at the phone screen, you will not have a Wi-Fi signal, but you will have a mobile phone signal. Because the microwave oven is designed to block the frequency of the microwave, so it doesn't leave the oven, so it can stay in the oven and heat the food. But because the frequency is the same as Wi-Fi, it also blocks the Wi-Fi. You cannot get a Wi-Fi signal inside a microwave oven. So if you put your phone in there and look at the screen, you will see the Wi-Fi bar disappear, but the signal from the mobile company stays there. And for goodness sake, if you do do this, don't put the microwave on. And if you do and you blow up <coughs> yourself, it's not my fault. I told you not to do that. Question. Yes. Why don't you feel heat from Wi-Fi signal? Is that the same way uh, Just because the power is too low. If the router was big enough, you would. Uh, but I don't know. The, the power output of a Wi-Fi router is probably only <coughs> milliwatts. Whereas the power output of a microwave oven is kilowatts, mm. so it's, it's a million times different. Uh, likewise, by the way, if you want a very cheap... Now, again, I do not recommend doing this at home, but if you want a very cheap way to block a Wi-Fi signal, you can just tear the door off the microwave oven and turn the oven on. Because what would happen is the room would fill up with microwaves from the oven, which will block out the Wi-Fi signal. The Wi-Fi signal will be too weak to show up among this uh, waves of the microwave. It'd be like trying it'd be like trying to find a small ripple in a giant ocean wave. You just you can't pick it up. So if you want a cheap way to block Wi-Fi in a house, just tear the door off the microwave and turn it on. I don't know. Like if you want to knock the Wi-Fi out of your neighbour next door for fun. Like that, you know. Just yeah, just because. How do we block the telephone signal? Which one, the mobile phone? Mm -hmm. You would need a device that broadcasts at the same frequency as the phone, which is less than the microwave. Unfortunately, these devices are quite illegal, so you'll have to make one yourself. Uh, to block mobile phone signals, quite illegal. There's an anime all about microwaves and time traveling. And they combine that they time travel by microwaves. Uh, the, science, the science in anime, I would say, is unreliable. <laughs> uh, just because the concrete is so thick, that's all. Okay, did you write these down? Yeah. Now, okay, come on. We need to expand a little bit on the visual spectrum. So here, when we're looking at the visual part, we need to uh, look at it in a bit more detail. So this is the diagram you had a moment ago, uh, except I'm expanding on the um, visible part here. And I just want you to notice that the reason there's different colors is because there's different wavelengths. So visible light at this wavelength will have a purpley color, and at uh, this a, a bigger wavelength, which means smaller frequency, it will have this color. Now, this is something you need to know for the exam. You need to know, for example, that 4 times 10 to the minus 7 will make a purple color, 5 makes a greenish color, 6 is a yellowy orange color, and 7 is an orangey red color. They expect you to know that for the exam, because sometimes uh, a question would have you calculate the wavelength and then ask for one mark, what is the color of this light? So you do need to know these numbers. If you can write them down, please. I have a question. Yeah. Could, sorry, no, not a question. Could you repeat why visible why why would visible have visible light have different wavelengths? Yes. Yeah. So we think about uh, light actually has many uh, wavelengths, and this is what makes light have different colors. Because we say light as if it's one thing, but really we need to think about light as well. There's red light, there's green light, there's blue light. These are all like different lights. Well, wouldn't mm -hmm. that make it more dangerous? Like gamma rays have 
like shorter wavelengths? Yeah, correct, but even though all of these wavelengths, like, uh, yeah, sh gamma rays have shorter wavelengths, which is down here. So it, this is not more dangerous because it's still well below ultraviolet light. However, it does have more energy, which means this light will be warmer on your skin than this light. So this experiment was done a few hundred years ago. Um, you know those prisms that split the light into mm -hmm. different colors? Uh, one experiment has it up against the window, splits the light and makes a rainbow on the table. If you line up thermometers at each color, you discover after a while the purple color one has warmed the thermometer the most. So it's not more dangerous, but more energy and so more heat um, than... It's the rainbow colors, yeah. So why don't we have a number for each color? Ah, no, they don't need you to know that much for the exam. So the six is for yeah, the orange. Yellow it's, orange. It's, it's a bit too much to expect students to know it for all seven colors, so this is enough. And red okay. is seven. Seven. Yeah. Is the power to the power of seven or minus seven? Minus seven. Did you write these down, Faisal? Yeah. Because you heard me saying they expect you to know these for the exam. Yes? Yeah. Right. Continue. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the wave map. These numbers. Yes. Yeah. AM is a type of radio wave. It's not used anymore, really. People use FM. So, I can't it? Yeah, you don't need to write down. They don't expect us to know the numbers of gamma rays, actually. No, but they do expect you to know the order. Uh, red and yellow? Huh? Red yellow. Yeah, red and yellow. Orangey. No, red and then yellow. Red and then yellow? Yeah. yeah. Okay, continue. And then after yellow, green? Green. Oh yeah, green, Faisal. And then the last one is purple. Okay. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Okay. So, Often in the exam, they like to ask uh, what are properties of electromagnetic waves. So the first one is, I think, uh, Yusuf, you were saying this last time, um, light waves, like electromagnetic waves, are transverse waves. The first thing. Um, that's one property, that's the transverse. Second property, um, electromagnetic waves travel with a constant velocity. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's an X-ray, a radio wave, a light wave, a gamma ray. They all travel at the same speed in a vacuum, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, also called the speed of light. I think it's more like 2.997, but yeah, it's on the calculator. And in uh, Oops. Well, air and it's different. Yeah. So when the sun waves are coming down, they're not actually traveling about this? Uh, be a little bit less because they have to pass through the air, but not much less. Okay, continue. Well, what's the speed? Huh? What's the speed? Uh, it's the called the speed of light constant. It's the speed of electromagnetic waves, like light, in a vacuum. The third property 
is the most amazing property of the tree. And the third property is electromagnetic waves, waves do not need a medium of propagation. Now what does that mean? If you think about a sound wave, a sound wave must travel through air. Uh, an <coughs> ocean wave must travel through water. But what's amazing about these waves is they don't need anything to travel through. They can literally travel through empty space. They don't require a medium. It, these are the only waves that don't require a medium. All other waves require a medium, like air, water, ground. But electromagnetic waves can move through empty space. So they're not vibrating any particles? They're vibrating a thing, a thing which uh, you don't know what it is, and I know what it is. Can you move it? Maybe I'll tell you one day. Um, no, it comes up in semester two at the end. Uh, what is you will discover what it is. But, yeah, it's vibrating. Uh, what's the first letter? Of what? Of this thing. That's vibrating then? Yeah. B. No, not vibrating. The thing that. Yeah, B. Vacuum. Yep. No. It's vibrating in empty space. It's not. No, not what's the vibrating. The medium. The no, medium. The medium. No, not the oh. medium. If it's not vibrating particles, how yeah. is it moving? Because of the yeah. thing. What's this thing? What's the process of this thing? Oh no, it's vibrating. It's still a wave that's vibrating up and down. It's just, it's vibrating in something that's empty. So you might be thinking, what is that thing that's vibrating up and down? Right. Nothingness. Right. What would this propagation mean? Movement of waves. Uh, in semester two, it will make more sense. Not the emission of electrons, and those electrons are vibrating. Okay, so if we go to space and we shall see it. The person that's 10 meters away will not hear? Correct. Because sound needs an air, yeah. a medium. Yes. But the light can still travel. Yes. When we hear our sound is traveling. No. Yes. It travels yes. through our bodies. So. Yeah, yeah, you should be able, you should be able to. to. If you're in a space suit. Yes. It's, a, it's just it can't go anywhere. Please remember these three for the exam. They do like to ask what are three properties of electromagnetic waves. And remember, this is for all electromagnetic waves, not just light. So it means your Wi-Fi will still work on the space station. If any of you make it there. Uh, okay, continuing. You got those three? Yep. Now, because V is always equal to C for electromagnetic waves, then we can say V equals C equals lambda F. So, if F is known, then lambda is known, and vice versa. So, for example, here, we know the C, we know the lambda, can we know the F? Yeah. If we know the C and we know the F, then we can know the lambda. So, it's enough to know F or lambda. Big wavelength means small frequency, and big frequency means small wavelength. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's much for you to write here. You can write something if you want, but I think even just writing these two formulas down is enough. Okay. Continue. Yeah. So, uh, polarization. So, last time I was telling you that you can change a longitudinal wave into a transverse wave. Uh, polarization is uh, kind of like this. Uh, polarization lets you change a transverse. When you have a transverse. Okay. It's polarization of light, but it doesn't have to be light. But in my example, it's light. But it can be any transverse wave. Is when the vibrations are confined to a single plane. Now, I really need a picture to explain this. So, what's happening here with the sun? The transverse light waves come out in all directions. 
This is called a polarizer. What happens is only the light that's traveling up and down pass through. All the other light is blocked. This is what I mean by confined to a single plane. You want only the vertical vibrating light here. All the other lights you filter out. So what you're doing here is you're, it's like you're taking a slice so you can uh, have just one transverse vertical light wave here. The rest get blocked because what happens is you have the slit and if the light is traveling this way it doesn't pass through. Only the light that's vibrating this way can pass through the slit. Now you actually very well could have one of these at home. Expensive sunglasses work in this way. Mm -hmm. Only vertical light can travel through so most of the light gets blocked. In other words the image is dimmer because most of the light is uh, blocked passing through. Uh, you get enough to see but not as much so not as bright. Uh, polarizers are also used for other things too. Um, I think they're used at radio stations for radio waves. It is often quite convenient for many reasons to have the wave confined to a single plane rather than having it vibrate in all different directions. So this is a polarizer, uh, polarization, if you can write this definition down. And please try to draw the picture as best you can. Can we stop a wave? Stop it? Yeah. Yes. Like if we put two sets of polarizers, will we stop the wave? Yes, if you have one polarizer vertical and the other horizontal, the image will be completely black. All waves are blocked. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember we did this. We had two yeah, and you slide them. Yeah. Yep. I remember this too. Then, one of the students, I asked them to break their sunglasses so we could test it in class, and it didn't work. So I guess their sunglasses were cheap sunglasses. Because the difference between the expensive glasses and the cheap sunglasses, oh, okay. the expensive glasses polarize, yeah. whereas the cheap sunglasses are just regular plastic dyed brown. And how does that make it better? The polarizer. Yeah. Well, it, the polarizer actually is blocking the light traveling through the glass, whereas all the cheap sunglasses are, do, are doing is just changing the light to a brown color, but it hasn't blocked any of the light. So it doesn't give your eyes any protection from the sun. Okay. So uh, I know definitely skiing sunglasses, you know the, the ones the skiers use, they're definitely polarizers because it's very important to protect your eyes when skiing from the sun. You get a lot of sun reflected from the snow. And does the old one there act as a polarizer? Not as a polarizer, uh, it does. It has a different role, which we'll see later. But it doesn't polarize the light. Another polarizer is the oh, okay. 3D glasses at the cinema. Yeah. Uh, one of the glasses polarizes vertically, and the other one polarizes horizontally. So the 3D glasses, uh, there are two images on the screen, and each image is polarized. One is horizontal light waves, and the other is vertical light waves and this is how they send the right image to the right eye. The horizontal light waves travel through one eye and the vertical ones get into the other eye. So this eye gets one image and this eye gets another image. So polarizers are used in the cinema as well for the uh, 3D glasses. Okay, uh, did you draw that? I, I like that you do a smiley face on the sun. It really... I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you draw this? Yeah, let's see. There's no smiley face on the sun. This won't do. Okay. Got that? Lee, did you draw this? Draw this. Draw. But what? 
Okay. Continue it. Yes? Okay. I'll give you one to try now. Here's a, a simple enough question. What is the frequency of red light? And I tell you the wavelength of red light is 700 nanometers. So using the formula I gave you today, you can get me the frequency. Okay, what answer did you get here? 4.3 times 10 to 14. Yeah. The formula is C over lambda. Four point three times ten to the nineteen and the unit? Why, 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 why fourteen? Yeah, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. Nine. Yeah, 700 nanometers. Hertz. Hertz, yeah. 4.28 times 10 to the 14 hertz is the answer. Isn't the red light 7 times 10 Yeah, which is 700 nanometers. Continue? I think it's true. Continue. Okay, so we'll do these ones together and we'll take turns because they're quite short. Uh, do number one and then I'll put the answer up on the screen. Okay. Yeah, how much is Giga? No! Giga is not 6. Giga is not 12. Giga is 9. If you look at your Wi-Fi router at home, it will actually say 2.4 gigahertz router. Yeah. But uh, my house said they changed it to uh, 4.8. I have a question. Recently, I've been no. feeling really no. sleepy and tired. No, no. I will answer your question once you answer my question. Do number one. Okay. I have a question. What? Yeah. Like the red light in here is 7 times 10 to the power of the seven. Yeah, which is the same as 700 nanometers. But what unit is this? Meters. Nine. Type, this, type in 700 times 10 to the minus 9. Is the way, wait, which one are you looking at? I don't know, we're just doing number one first. Okay, do we have number one done? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.4 giga, which is 10 power 9, so we get 0 <coughs> 0.125 meters, so 12 and a half centimeters is the wavelength of a Wi Fi wave. Now, what's your question? Okay. Right, try number two. What time is it? Yeah, look at your picture. What answer did you get? Let's see.
Where's your colors? <laughs> no, you know the, the one with the colors. Yeah. What do you mean with that? Oh, we got that. What's the answer to number two? Green. Green. Yeah, but what's the number? Um, five point four five times ten to the fourteen. Uh, we got this, which on my diagram, what was around about five? Was it in the middle? No, it was towards the end, was it? Green. Green color. Okay. Yeah, between green and yellow. Okay, greeny we'll go with. Right. A visible light wave is given more energy and its frequency increases. At what frequency will it become invisible? So, when you think about your light, uh, it starts, uh, wait. It starts at red, mm. orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. If it goes past these colors, it becomes invisible and becomes ultraviolet. Yes. So purpley colors are the last colors you can see before they become invisible, ultraviolet light. So when will this happen? At what frequency? Well, what was the wavelength of purple? Well, it's one times ten power negative seven. Four. So we'll say at about three then. Okay. So we'll put in three times ten to the minus seven. So at about ten to the fifteen uh, hertz, the light will become invisible. So here, look. These colours we can see. But we can't see after this color. Why? That if our eyes are not able to see past this and past this, we can only see this much. Some animals can see this though, but people Oops. can't. Birds can see this. Yeah. I don't know the cats. Guys, um, this frequency is now too high for us to see. It's past purple, but. Uh, and it's becoming dangerous. However, some animals and some birds can see this colour that we can't see. No, it'd be daytime birds because they use it to tell which direction the sun is, even if it's cloudy. Yes. But people make the glass we can see in the evening. Instead of huh? times ten oh yes, 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 yes. You could make this to see it, yes. Yeah, but some animals can see this naturally. I don't know if cats can see infrared. But it can see in the evening. Yes, of course it can. Also you can see in the evening, but you can't see this. Their eyes can see in darker places because I think their pupils can open bigger. Their areas is small and narrow. Yes. And they can polarize. I don't know. Can they polarize? Yeah. Sure. And they can polarize and they should be able to see. Okay. Last yeah. one. This is for uh, for three. Yes, yeah, supersonic waves and we can. Can yes, dogs might be able to too. No? Huh? The last we can see are from red to violet. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, so this now is on past violet and we can't see it. Lastly, EM waves with a frequency equal to or greater than UV are harmful to humans. These waves are well known to cause cancer. <laughs> are waves from mobile phones harmful in this way? No. no. They are definitely not. Well, no, no. For this lesson. We have a double lesson. Take a five minute break. No need, let's stop. Teacher wants a five minute break. Yeah.